hello all myself shuti welcome back to my channel today i would like to take this opportunity to introduce and exhibit the results of one of our project students of bioed solutions that is ankita from ms ramaya college of engineering bangalore so we all know that this is the era of nanotechnology keeping that in mind we have worked towards the biosynthesis of silver nanoparticles using fungi isolated from soil so nanoparticles means these are manufactured and used at very small scales the size will be less than 100 nanometer and the structures of this nanomaterials will be in the form of particles tubes rods and also in the form of fibers if we have to imagine the size of the nanomaterial or any nanoparticle it ranges from 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer wherein the size will be lesser than that of the virus so the ease of working is mainly because of its size uh, so when we come to biomedical field or biological uh, innovations the nanoparticles are majorly produced using silver metal so the nanoparticles produced this way are used in various fields like medical food healthcare consumer and so many industrial purposes because of their unique physical and chemical properties they have very peculiar properties and also due to their optical electrical thermal uh, high electrical conductivity and more of biological properties due to these peculiar properties they have been used for several applications like antibacterial agents industrial household healthcare related products cost consumer products medical device coatings optical sensors cosmetics and more in pharmaceutical and food industries as well it is also mainly used in diagnostics orthopedics drug delivery and mainly as anti cancer agents wherein ultimately it enhances the tumor killing effects of the anti cancer drugs that is why it is the era of nano materials now so the physico chemical properties of the nano particle which is formed plays a major role it has a great impact impact on whichever field we use so the man, uh, nano material such as size shape size distribution surface area shape solubility aggregation all these matters to make a nanoparticle a strong agent so uh, once the nanoparticles are formed they will be evaluated for their toxicity and also how they are compatible with the biological process which is going on inside the body uh once these nanoparticles are formed they should be characterized for various properties like uh, uh, using analytical techniques like uv visible spectroscopy x-ray diffractometry fourier transform in infrared spectroscopy x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy dynamic light scattering scanning electron microscopy transmission electron microscopy atomic force microscopy all these analytical techniques should be carried out to characterize a nano particle which is formed uh, so the bioavailability of the nano particle makes or decides whether it can be a powerful therapeutic agent because of this this bioavailability plays role in cellular uptake biological distribution penetration into biological barriers all these makes a nano particle to be a better agent in biomedical application so this particle can be produced in various ways like physical chemical and biological methods in case of physical method the procedures like spark discharging speed radiation all these will be used whereas in case of chemical methods reducing agents and different metal precursors stabilizing and capping agents will be used but what we will be doing is through biological methods in case of biological methods we will be using biological systems like bacteria fungus plant extracts and small biomolecules like vitamins amino acids etc so all these and the uh, method what we follow is very simple cost effective dependable and also through environment friendly approaches uh, as i said there are so many metal particles using which nanoparticles can be uh, 
created so it is through gold palladium copper iron zinc oxide silver platinum selenium so in case of gold metal particles we will be using in applications like dna labeling biosensor drug delivery cancer therapy antimicrobial properties in case of biocatalysis palladium will be used for antimicrobial copper will be used the anti cancer molecular Im imaging cancer therapy iron will be used as a agent for preparing nanoparticles in the same way zinc oxide for cosmetics and coating silver for anti cancer antimicrobial and anti viral properties platinum will be having anti cancer property and selenium for anti cancer and anti microbial these are the various metals using which nanoparticles will be produced uh, so when it comes to application as i have already explained it has so many biological properties it is used in biomedical field agricultural field and human health care also in improvements like water treatment textiles imaging biosensing all these fields so now we will see ankita who will explain her project and what is the outcome of the project she did at bioed solutions Uh, hello everyone, I'm Ankita. I'm a final year BE undergraduate student in BE in Biotechnology at Rama Institute of Technology. I did a short term internship at BioEd Solutions Penia. Uh, the whole motive of the internship was to uh, learn molecular and microbiology lab techniques, which I gained through a short term project titled Biosynthesis of Silver Nanoparticles by Fungi Isolated from Soil. So what are nanoparticles and why nanoparticles? As you all know, nanoparticles are in the limelight today and they are ultra fine particles or particles of matter ranging from 1 to 100 nanometer. So nanoparticles are used in different fields such as physics, chemistry, biology, geology, etc. So silver nanoparticles being under metal nanoparticles or noble metals have unique physiochemical properties and can be used in nanotechnology, uh, tissue engineering, biosensors, in nanomedicine, etc., as catheters and uh, all that. So basically, silver nanoparticles are more efficient in terms of drug delivery, drug carriers, because of its high bioavailability, high shelf life, high stability and high drug carrier ability. So silver nanoparticles are also used as antibacterial agents such because they can kill gram positive and gram negative bacteria by lysing their reservoir and uh, destabilizing their function. So silver nanoparticles are used in various fields in different uh, other uh, sectors such as textiles, agriculture, etc. So we did biosynthesis of nanoparticles. Those silver nanoparticles can also be produced chemically in large quantities and also can be produced quicker but they are very costly inefficient and cause toxic hazards to the environment for which biosynthesis was done so biosynthesis can be either through fungi plants yeast bacteria etc but we did fungi so why fungi fungi because they are more they have high tolerance to metals they are uh, they produce extracellular quantity extracellular uh, products in a high quantity uh, which uh, uh, result in high stability of nanoparticles their biomass production is more which reduces the step for their filtrate extraction and they also the mycelial mass of fungi as compared to that of plants uh, have high resistance to agitation and pressure which is used for large scale synthesis so microorganisms use the metal ions which are in their environment and convert them into element metal itself for formation of nanoparticles so this is the basic uh, uh, technique and principle so the steps we followed were firstly soil was isolated from a nearby source and was uh, serial dilution was carried out from 10 to the power of minus 1 to 10 to the power of minus 6. So the 10 from 1 gram from 1 gram of soil the serial dilution was done 10 to the power of minus 6 was taken and swabbing and streaking technique was used to do culturing. So then subculturing was done to make sure the pure colonies were obtained in different co different colonies that were obtained in the culture. The, we observed that there were different colonies of different morphologies, color, shape, etc., which obviously said that there were different strains which were growing in one plate. 
so to observe that we need to done we need to do more, uh, morphological analysis molecular characterization and mass culture so morphological analysis was done through staining technique where fungal staining was done and observed under the uh, microscope then molecular characterization included dna isolation then pcr amplification followed by gel electrophoresis then pcr sanger sequencing where the genes were isolated then followed by um, which uh, the capillary electrophoresis was done which was connected to an electrophorogram which gave peaks or graphs of different nucleotides which was used for sequencing this was then carried out to do bioinformatic analysis using blast and uh, uh, phylogenetic tree construction so the mass culture which was the last mass culture mass culture 250 ml of broth was added to the mass culture then uh, which was incubated for 72 hours then milky water was added the filtrate from milky water was taken and uh, agno3 was added to for the formation of silver nanoparticle a colorless to deep brown color was seen which was observed this was the uh, color visual observance of formation of silver nanoparticles meaning to say that the fungal extracellular matter this is the extracellular synthesis of silver nanoparticles so the extracellular matter of fungi has converted the ag plus ions from agno3 into its metal form itself Uh, which resulted in the formation of uh, silver nanoparticles so this od was taken and observed using uv spectrophotometer so this was the uh, project which was carried out the future work could include uh, testing of different culture conditions such as temperature ph biomass etc and the uh, different soil conditions would, would also uh, be considered for testing of different types of fungi that would be grown or different uh, silver nanoparticles and its efficiency the silver nanoparticles which were formed could also be used in nanomedicine nanobiotechnology tissue engineering and other uh, anti cancer activities which is its main uh, principle and form so this internship helped me a lot to gain molecular and microbiology technique which was very happy uh, dr shruti ma'am was a very good guide she was very patient and very uh, keen to teach and be with us throughout the lab with you every single day it was a very great experience the lab is equipped with very good updated equipments which helped us learn the equipments and its working as well she taught us just not just the project itself but also throughout the working of basic principles of other projects as well so this was a very good experience for me i will be very happy uh, and looking forward to work with her in uh, projects coming looking forward uh, i thank dr shruti ma'am for being my internship guide throughout the project and being with me throughout the program and helping me learn and apply the knowledge thank you so much now uh, with having a brief knowledge about why nanotechnology is booming and how nanoparticles are produced as explained by ankita also uh, i will be just explaining the few results what we got and what is the inference of the results we got so as said nanoparticles are biosynthesized when the microorganisms grab target ions from their environment and then turn the metal ions into the elements through enzymes generated by the cell activities so these studies have found that many microorganisms can produce inorganic nanoparticles through either intracellular or extracellular routes as i said there are so many biological systems using which nanoparticles can be produced but in most of the cases why fungi is used is fungi are attractive agents for biogenic synthesis of silver nanoparticles as they have high tolerance to metals and also easy to handle they also excrete large quantities of extracellular proteins see in this cases you can see that from the soil we have isolated the fungal culture and using the mass culture media we will filter and to that liquid we will be adding silver nitrate so here the reduction occurs with the help of fungal biomolecules and that is how the elemental silver will be formed that elemental silver um, will be formed and it makes the nanoparticle which is produced with the help of fungal extract to be a potential one so how we have done is we have taken the soil which is found around ramayo college and it was cereal diluted and the whatever the fungus um, can be grown 
were grown on the PDA, PDA media and then they were subcultured. The pure colonies were obtained. You can see the so many colonies of fungus which were grown and these colonies were characterized or the further experiment was taken up with three methods. One is morphological analysis wherein the colonies were absorbed for the distinct morphology, color, size and shape using staining technique and microscopic observation. Followed by this, they were cultured and from the broth DNA isolation and further Sanger sequencing to identify the names of the microorganisms. And then the mass culture was produced and as explained before, silver nanoparticles were produced using the mass culture of the fungus. These are the images of the microscopic or in the morphological analysis what we did with the obtained cultures and followed by that in the molecular characterization we have identified it using Sanger sequencing method and this is the image showing the formation of the silver uh, nanoparticle. So, Whichever organisms were capable of producing the silver nanoparticle uh, will turn into brown color and this brown color will be characterized or was found out further by measuring the OD using spectrophotometer. So with this to coming to the conclusion we were able to identify um, few Fungal species like Trichoderma vide, Fusarium verticolides, Alternaria alternate, Rhizopus stolonifer, Aspergillus flavus. So here it is just a preliminary results what we got. Uh, there is lot more left to optimize the physical conditions um, to uh, make the nano particle which is produced stable by optimizing pH, temperature, culture conditions, culture mass, etc. And once we identify the potent nanoparticle which is produced, then it will be further uh, assessed for various biological activities like antibacterial, anti-cancer and uh, depending on the properties. Uh, so before that we have to check the toxicity of the material which is produced and then the bioavailability. So with this uh, our next era will be whatever happens will the big thing will be happening will be happening with the very small particles in the coming days uh, so the idea behind as i always say to exhibit this work is again uh, this always shows the interest the student has towards the subject and at the same time it will create interest or motivate the students to perform the research work in their area of interest. Thank you all.